السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Dearest brothers, sisters and children, welcome to this short reminder. I'm calling this the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now, inshallah, on the day of Eid, your family, as well as probably every family that you know, will be doing something known as Qurbani or Udhiyah. What is that? It is when we get an animal, usually a sheep or a goat, or maybe a bigger one, a cow or a camel, and we sacrifice it in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we distribute some of that meat to the poor and the needy and subhanAllah some, for some this is the only time in the entire year that they get to enjoy meat. Allahu Akbar. What an amazing act of charity and what a beautiful tradition that we have in Islam. But did you know that this, tra this tradition actually doesn't go back to our Prophet Sallallahu but it goes back further all the way to Ibrahim السلام, and in the beginning this tradition wasn't actually to do with slaughtering or sacrificing an animal. It was actually something a lot more difficult. It was about a family affair. It was to do with a sacrifice to do with another family member. And I know that you've heard the story before where Ibrahim السلام, was instructed by Allah to sacrifice his son. What a, a truly incredible sacrifice to be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet we find the story is given to us in a lot of detail because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to learn something from that story. And so I'm going to share with you what the Quran has to say about that historical incident because we know by now that wherever we find a story in the Quran about something that happened way in the past, it is there in order to inspire us about our own life and our own future. So when we're listening to this now, I want you to think about what you can learn from this in your personal life as a family, as an individual, and what lesson you can take from it. Where do we find this story mentioned in detail? Well, we find it in Surah al safat verse number 100. So let's go through the verses slowly and I'll try to give some commentary here and there, but I'll let the Quran speak for itself and I want you to be thinking and contemplating, Ya Allah, what guidance do we learn from what you are telling us? A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Rabbi hab li minash salihin Fabashshirnahu bighulamin halim Ibrahim alayhi salam called out Oh my master gift me from the righteous now, this first verse, verse number 100, Ibrahim alayhi salam here is making dua to Allah. He's making dua to Allah because it's been a long time and still he has not been blessed with a child. And I want you to think about people that have been trying for a child and they are, there's nothing happening and they are struggling and they're becoming more and more anxious. Ibrahim alayhi salam was once upon a time in a situation like that. He's asking Allah, he's begging Allah, oh Allah, please grant me a child. And more importantly, make that child from the salihin, from the righteous. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on his own terms, at the right time, he answered the dua and he said, فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ حَلِيمٍ And so we congratulated him with the news of a child that would be Halim. And many scholars say this means a child that will be intelligent. And when you think of intelligence, you think of high IQ, you think of good, getting good grades at GCSE or A-levels. And though that is part of having high IQ or having intelligence, we find here that this child, which many scholars say is Ismail, when he grew up, his intelligence wasn't just to do with scoring good on his tests, but rather it was to do with being able to do the right thing and submit his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like what his father will say, in my dream I have seen an instruction from Allah to slaughter you. What do you have to say? There we will see how intelligent he truly was. So the verse continues, 
فلما بلغ معه السعي قال يا بني إني أرى في المنام أني أذبحك فانظر ماذا ترى And then when he reached an age uh, of strength and some say uh, or rather when he reached um, a certain age where he was with his father able to work and some say this was 13 years old at that point his father Ibrahim turned and said to him Ya Bunaya, oh my dear child speaking to him with love and affection and warmth he said indeed I keep seeing because this is the present tense ara it means I've seen over and over again fil manami in my sleep a vision in which anni adbahuka I am slaughtering you I am sacrificing you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fanzur madha tara so tell me what do you think now what is amazing here is that if you step back how much would Ibrahim alayhi salam love his son like all parents they love their children but when you have a child that you've tried for many many years to have and then you have that child well then you have even more love on top of that do you remember when Ismail was born what test did his mother Hajar have to go through that's right Ibrahim salam had to leave them in the desert of Mecca where there was no one there were no hotels there was no well of Zamzam there was nothing there and he had to leave them there alone and Hajar the mother she went back and forth up Mount Safa and Mount Marwa looking for people looking for help and she almost lost Ismail baby Ismail almost died until Allah subhanahu wa brought relief and the well of Zamzam became uh, discovered and alhamdulillah they survived and now we have Makkah al-Mukarrama and we can drink from the Zamzam water so this is the son we are talking about according to many scholars the one that almost died in the beginning and the one that they had after much difficulty that is the son that Allah said you must sacrifice the other interesting thing is that Ibrahim when he sees it in his dream he knows it's a dream from Allah and he's not going to go against the instruction of Allah but he still says to his son son what do you think about this what does that teach us well how old was he some of the scholars say that he was around 13 years old he's a teenager and if you think of a 13 year old that you know um, think about how they talk to their parents some of them subhanallah scream and shout at their parents and many of them do not care to listen to their mothers and fathers may Allah grant them understanding that's a very bad thing but here he says to his 13 year old son what do you think about this son why did he say why what do you think about this was he ever going to consider and uh, not doing as Allah had instructed him of course not but perhaps one of the reasons why he asked his son what do you think is to give his son a chance to uh, show his own willingness to accept the decree and the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and maybe also to show his son a level of respect that son you're a young man now you know this is a big decision and I want you to take responsibility and think about it what do you think we should do yes I'm a prophet of Allah yes I receive revelation from the heavens but son I have respect for you what do you think about this and so when he said this to his son what do you think the reaction was the Quran tells us قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ افْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ سَتَجِدُنِي إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ Ismail said, Oh my dear father. And look, father said, Oh my dear son. And son responded, Oh my dear father. افْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ Do as you have been commanded. Meaning, I understand that that dream is not just random thoughts coming into your mind. That's not coming from you. That actually is an instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you are a prophet. And so do as you have been instructed and commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's saying, Dad, I know you don't have a choice in this. And you will find me, he says, inshallah, from those that are patient. What does that mean? It means that, Dad, this is not going to be easy. I'm scared. 
you know, I, I, inside I'm really scared. Like, what? My life is going to come to an end? There's going to be a knife put to my throat by my own dad? Like, this is crazy. But you know what? Inshallah, if Allah wills, meaning I'm going to need Allah's help for this, you're going to find me from those that are patient. And that teaches us a lesson that Allah knows it's not easy to be a good Muslim, to listen, to pray five times a day, to be good to your parents, to take care of other people, to do the right thing and to speak the truth when your reputation or even your life may be at risk. But at the same time, we have Allah to help us. And Ismail, he knew that. And that is why he's saying that it's not going to be easy, but Allah will help me and you will find that you will find me to be from those that have suffered. So may Allah make us from the Sabirin when it comes to making difficult decisions and praying that Allah help us to do the right thing. So father, our son, the son responded in the most amazing way. And you can just think like as a father, how Ibrahim would have, you know, been so pleased with his son. As a parent, you know, I can tell you that when your children don't listen to you, when your children ignore you, it's very hurtful. It's very upsetting. Like, you know, I raised you, I fed you, I clothed you, I was there for you when you were sick and I asked you to do small things and you can't do that. And also on the opposite side, when your children listen to you, when you ask them to do something and say, yes, Baba, that's fine, I'll do that. It's okay. Um, that feeling of contentment and satisfaction and, and happiness you can imagine now how Ibrahim would have felt when his son said to him, Dad, it's incredibly difficult, but you know what? I accept it. Do what you need to do. Allahu Akbar. How Ibrahim would have felt. And that shows us that they had a very strong relationship. They had a very close bond. And there was an understanding between father and son. This was a, a happy family. This was a family of love and warmth and understanding. So the time came where the, the great sacrifice had to take place. And Allah then says, And so when both of them submitted themselves, And he, Ibrahim, turned his son on, on his front, and some said on his forehead, facing the ground. Now, it's two amazing things here. First, Allah said that when both of them submitted, and the word aslama, you can hear this, you can hear it sound very similar to Islam, aslama, Islam, because they come from the same root to mean to submit your will. Islam is about submitting our will to Allah. That is why we are the slaves and Allah is our master. But here, Allah said both of them, meaning Ibrahim, he submitted to Allah, meaning. He had to go against his own parental instinct to do whatever it takes to keep your children safe and happy. And now he's willing and submitting his will to go against that and to do something which is going to harm his child. On the same, on the same token, his son also submits his will to that of Allah and accepts that, you know what, his life may be taken from him because of this sacrifice. Both of them submit, submitted themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why did Ibrahim have to turn his son and face down with his forehead on the ground? Some of the scholars said because he couldn't bear to look at his son's face when he's about to sacrifice him. I mean, it shows how torn Ibrahim salam was inside. Like, I can't believe I'm doing this to my own child. And I always say that, you know, when you go to a restaurant and your young boy or girl picks up a knife, you know, your heart skips a beat. You're like, put that down quickly. Now I imagine that knife is in your own hand and you're going to have to place it to the neck of your child. Only, it's, it's un unimaginable, subhanAllah, the kind of dilemma that Ibrahim was in. And then when he got to that moment, imagine his heart must be pounding. وَنَادَيْنَاهُ أَيَّا إِبْرَاهِيمُ And we called out to him, meaning in that moment, we call out, Oh, Ibrahim! And Ibrahim froze. He stopped. He was about to do one of the most tremendous things and he stopped and the voice he heard, Oh, Ibrahim! What is it, Oh, Allah? You have already fulfilled your dream. You have already fulfilled that vision. 
But here's the thing, Ibrahim never went through with it. He hadn't yet completed the instruction, but Allah said, you've done it already. Why? Because Ibrahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted to see, are you willing and to go ahead with this? As soon as his, his intention was there and he was following through with it with action, it was as if to Allah, he's done it already. And that teaches us subhanAllah, that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sometimes in life you plan on doing a good deed, you may take the initial steps, but you don't get to do it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write it down as if you did it and will give you the reward for it as well. Allahu Akbar. Indeed, this is the way we reward the people who excel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing our attention to the fact that this is not just about the father and son in the story, this is actually about the way Allah will treat any in the future, like us who seek to excel and are able to submit our will to Allah and to sacrifice for his sake. So what happened then? His son wasn't slaughtered. What happened instead? Allah says, وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ and we ransomed him with a great sacrifice and we left for him a word of praise among the later people. So as you know that his son was shifted, in his place came a ram, a sheep. Ibrahim al-Islam was then told now sacrifice this sheep and that slaughtering became the tradition which we now do on the day of Eid, on the day of Udhiyah, which we call Qurbani in remembrance of the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now somebody may say, what was the great lesson here? And you probably already kind of gauged it already. It's actually not to do with harming somebody else. It's to do with love and the fact that Ibrahim, he loved his son and yet he was prepared to sacrifice everything, even the love he had for his son for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the lesson for us all, that in our life, we love things. We love our friends, we love our parents, we love our games, we love our toys, we love lots of things we have in our life that we love. And sometimes our love for those things makes us do things that displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to sacrifice, that to remove the things in our life to that interfere with our love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe a friend of yours whispers in your ear, hey, what do you think about stealing this? And because he's your friend, you're like, you know what? Let's go away, let's go ahead with that. Sounds like a good dare. But in that moment, your love for your friend is getting in the way of your love for Allah. Because if you listen to your friend, you'll end up displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the struggle of a Muslim that they never become too attached to anything in this world, whether it's material, or whether it's uh, another person, to the point that they are willing to do something for them that will displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what Ibrahim was getting rid of. That is what he was told to sacrifice. Not his son, but the love he had for his son that may interfere with his love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is one of the great lessons of the story of sacrifice. Let us think about Ibrahim. We ask Allah to inspire us through his story and make us of those that are from the Sabirin, patient. We ask Allah to make us of those that are always willing to submit our will to him, even in the toughest of moments. And we ask Allah to unite us as families following the tradition of the prophets. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen.